Hello fish enthusiasts, I am Easy, and I hope this is the video y'all have been waiting for. I know a lot of people have wanted mud skipper videos and care guides about them, so we are going to do that today. I get a lot of questions on my Atlantic mud skipper about Steven, like what in the primordial soup is that? Why does he look like that? The sirens from Ice Age 3. I've never actually seen Ice Age 3, so that's funny. I looked it up. I'm like, ha, it, it is him. And how do I take care of them? Where do they come from? Why do they walk? How do they breathe? So I'm going to be answering most of those questions. Uh, probably all of them. Probably not the Ice Age one. I don't know. They're both mud skippers. They're both the same. So I have to take apart Steven's tank today to put it back onto the cinder blocks. I actually haven't done that yet. So mud skippers do come from tropical areas in West Africa to Southeast Asia. So places like Madagascar, Samoa, um, Malaysia, and the Philippines will have them. A lot, I get a lot of comments on people saying they find them there. That's really cool. I'd like to see that one day. Most skippers live in estuaries of that area. So where the river and the ocean meet, they live in those mud flats and mangrove swamps. So when building a tank, you're going to want to recreate that because they are a brackish water species and brackish is a mix of salt and fresh water. So since mud skippers are naturally caught, they cannot be bred in captivity. You have to really create that area for them. Because they are wild caught, you're going to need a brackish tank or they like brackish tanks. Luckily, since mud skippers have a salinity tolerance, so I'll get a lot of people saying, oh, you can keep these in fully fresh or fully salt. Oh, yes, you can, but considering they do come from fully brackish estuaries, you're going to want to keep them in that range. But they can be paired with other brackish fish, such as archer fish and bumblebee gobies. But you do have to consider the type of species that you want. Steven is an Atlantic mud skipper. He will get about six inches. If you do want to keep mud skippers with other brackish fish, I would recommend a smaller species such as a silver lined or the barbed mud skipper because they only get to three inches. Another common mud skipper to keep with bumblebee gobies is the Indian mud skipper. They are smaller. You can keep them in a 20 gallon tank. So you could put two in a 20 gallon tank this whole thing is a 20 gallon. It has my frogs. I've never actually shown them before. But if you are interested in keeping them together, that would be a good choice. Otherwise, you could do fiddler crabs. So for a larger species of mud skipper, you're going to want a 40 plus gallon aquarium. I have a 50 gallon low boy. It's two feet by four feet, so it gives lots of surface room. I could probably do four or five in there and they'll be plenty happy. They'll have their own space and there's lots of surface area to roam around. Otherwise, a 40 gallon or a 75 gallon would be great. You could make a nice paludarium and have a halfway water section and fill the rest up with sand. That would be good. You could probably do two to three um, Atlantic, but for African mud skippers, I wouldn't do under a 75 because they do get bigger than six inches and they do get aggressive. So if you're not interested in aggressive fish, these pets might not be for you because they do often show aggression. They chase each other around. Now I do recommend a refractometer for measuring your salinity. It is much easier to use than a hydrometer. The problem with hydrometers is that the brackish level is not high enough for the leveling to actually make a difference. It won't be as accurate instead of just using one of these. And get a good high quality one for $30. Or if you're interested in salt water, there are even better ones for testing salinity for about $90 to $100-ish. I do recommend getting one of those because they won't need to be as calibrated as often. So the salinity you want to be aiming for for these fish is about 1.003 to 1.010. This will put them in the good brackish area that they like. 
Of course, they can tolerate any level in between salt and fresh, but you're going to really want to do brackish for their best healthy life quality. Okay, wow, that's a lot of information on tank sizes and salinity, but now I am refilling the water with fresh water, and the temperature is around 80 degrees because they are very tropical fish, and then I mix in my salt water batch. Make sure your heater is set for around 78 to 82 because they do like those hot tropical temperatures. And also add a few air stones, power head, or wave makers to your tank. A wave maker is very cool for mud skipper tanks, but all fish do need some sort of aeration. Okay, now it's time for the substrate. So the best option for a substrate is either mud or fine sand. You don't want any sharp or coarse substrate as it can cut their sensitive skin. Since they breathe out of their skin, the right substrate is crucial for them. I'm adding large smooth river stones for an extra ground space. Steven also uses them as hiding since there's caves from the placement of the rocks. But if you do use stones, make sure you boil them or keep them in the oven for a while, you want to kill all of that bacteria um, from the outside. You can use live mangroves, those are really cool, you can buy them off of eBay or at your local fish store. Or you could also use mangrove roots or any type of driftwood as long as it's not rigid, um, any smooth driftwood would work. I use cork as a floater because it floats really naturally and it's not that hard. So anyways, I hope you have found what you are looking for. Let me know what you think of the tank in the comments. I'm pretty proud of it. Um, the stand came out better than expected, honestly. And I think my next video will probably be diet or, or some cool facts. If you guys are interested in cool facts about them, they are funky animals. I love them a lot. A lot of people love them. And I hope I answered all of your questions and see you in the next video.